In this video, we're going to take the Vire Stove and the Vire Mini outdoors and do some demonstration using wood, wood pellets, and charcoal. A few things I want to mention before we get outside and do some demonstrations with the Vire Stove and the Vire Mini. To begin, if you have not already watched my comprehensive review on the two stoves, I highly recommend you do, because that's where all the detailed information about the Vire Stove and the Vire Mini are. All the specifications, all the assembly, and all the ways that it can be operated. Now, in this video, we're going to go outside and do some tests, but it's going to appear to be a little confusing, possibly, in that what you're going to see is me out in the woods doing some tests with the, wood, with the stoves and wood, of course, but then I'm going to come in and do some testing with charcoal and wood pellets in my backyard. Truth is, I did the second part, the charcoal and wood pellets, about two weeks before I went outside to do the testing with the wood. So I just want to clear that up, and the reason I say that is because in those videos, I talk about the outdoor ambient temperature temperature and it's warmer the day I want to use wood than it was the day I used the charcoal and wood pellets. All right, let's get going. So it turns out the day I picked to come out and do a stove test was really windy. Uh, well, we're going to work with it and see what we can do. I rigged, you probably can't see it, but I'll, I'll, maybe I'll show it to you. I took my hammock chair that I normally relax in and turned it into a bit of a windshield from the, the breeze into the fire pit. But uh, yeah, okay, I think I'm set up and ready to go. Got all my materials collected. I'll tell you now what my experience is. We're trying to do two stoves at the same time is a challenge. You're trying to keep them both lit and going, but uh, enough complaining. Let's get some work done. So there are a couple of ways to get, well, actually there's any number of ways, I guess, to get a rocket stove going. It's gonna, th you know, ultimately, you're feeding it in through that port right there. That's what you're looking to do. So how you get the fire going to start with isn't as important as where you end up. So I like to do it this way. It just makes things go a little faster, gets a better coals rocking a little sooner. And that is I put in a bed of sticks, not too many, I don't overload it. I want the airflow down there. I put in some sticks and next I'm gonna light it from the top. And uh, so easiest way for me to do that is with some birch bark and some very fine twigs. Now you're going to see a lot of flame once it gets going, but that is going to settle down as it catches and starts burning the sticks that I feed in through the feed port. So hoping that you can hear me over the wind. Let's get this show in the road here. God love birch bark. Got to get it going though. Come on, Mark, you can do better than this. Get her birch bark going. A little down there. Throw a little of the rougher stuff on top of it. Get my super fine twigs in there before I can't. Like I said, you're gonna see a lot of flame for a couple of seconds before it settles down. See if I can't get some of this lit right off. Oh, what a challenging day. What a challenging day. All right, that one is going. Good. Now where's my rough stuff for there? Some rough stuff down. Start feeding in some twigs here. So I, I intentionally uh, did no wood processing for this demonstration other than sticks off of the ground. I didn't cut any larger sticks down. I just wanted to do everything, breaking it from branches or found if it was dry enough off the ground. Not after the wind rain we've had though. As I said, a lot, a lot of flame coming up to start with because the air roaring down these feed tubes is quite incredible. All right. Looks like I have sustainable fires going in them. 
that I can now get ready to put some uh, utensils on. So with the two uh, stoves going, I have two different missions for them. So on the lower one, all I'm going to do is just put water on, just a kettle on for coffee. But I want you to see how uh, it reacts to the kettle with the smoke. And the tall one, as the flames die down a little bit, I'm going to put on my lunch. And my lunch today is a shakshuka of a type. And I've made that out here in the woods before. Basically, it's stewed tomatoes with some spices in it, and then you pouch a couple of eggs directly in it. And today I'm going to cover it with a little bit of cheese. So that sounds pretty good. But right now I'm going to take some time to tend these fires and make sure I've got good sustainable fires. And then I'll start my lunch. Excellent. Okay, so the stoves have settled into a just a nice sustained burn using the fuel that is in the feed ramps. Little hint, make sure you continually keep an eye on what your, your, where your fuel is. They will slide down to a degree, but uh, sometimes they just need a little prompting to make sure they're in the, the hot zone down at the bo bottom there. So you may be able to see in the smaller stove I have flames starting to back up the feed ramp a little bit as it's not as preferentially flowing through. The uh, chimney as it should. All right, I'm gonna put the kettle on the smaller because I want you to see it's going well now, but I want you to see how it dampens down when I do that and you'll get smoke. Actually, it's not working too bad right now, but uh, it slowed the flames down a little bit, but you can probably see smoke, additional smoke. And yes, in a minute I'll close the feed ramp just to make sure it preferentially goes down underneath the fuel. Just so happens I've just noticed something new, which is the crossbars are in the way of closing the feed ramp. So I'm going to have to take the crossbars down, off, close the feed ramp, put the crossbars back on. So why don't I do that right now. Where are my pliers? Take my kettle off. It's a strange little quirk I never noticed before. All right, lift my feed bars, my crossbars off. Flip that over. Now I can put the crossbars back on. But, okay, it still works. Feed ramp still works. Good. Let's get another stick or two down there. When you're burning pine, which is primarily what I have available to me right here, it can go through them pretty quickly. Not the best wood in the world, certainly not the f cleanest wood in the world to burn, but it is what I have. I'll put my kettle back on. So you can probably see some backdrafting happening up the feed ramp. And this is one of those nice things about rocket stoves. Longer sticks, no problem. Even if they stick out the end, no problem. All right, that one can wait. It is windy. All right, time to put my lunch on. As I assemble it, I'll show it to you. So to start with, tomatoes. Uh, diced tomatoes with some onions in there, which I'll just let stew up for a few minutes before I add the next ingredient. Something to stir with. That won't take too long, but now's the opportunity to put some uh, spices on. It's not a true shakshuka. I don't have all the regular spices you would put on, but I do have some garlic. What is this one? Old Bay seasoning. Really, it's just stewed tomatoes. Don't need any salt. Liquid hot sauce. Here we go. Hot peppers. Anything else? 
some dried herbs. Just a mixture. Yeah, that's all it takes. And they are bubbling, stewing. I want to reduce some of the liquid off before I add my eggs. Let's see if I can get at the water. Bubbles. All right, so there's not much to see here for a few minutes. I'll um, work on my lunch. And if there's anything interesting to see, I'll bring it back. Otherwise, we'll have a discussion after I eat. And try to step over the stoves and create some shadow for them. But uh, I just repositioned the camera. I wanted you to see down the feed ramps, the fire in the taller of the two stoves, the fire original. The fire is all concentrated where it should be over the fire grate, right underneath the chimney. And you can't see this, but my tomatoes on top are bubbling away nicely. But if you look at the Vire Mini, you can see that flame is working its way back up the feed ramp, less than ideal. So it helps if I do that, close the feed port off. And then it preferentially moves to the, the airflow moves underneath and up the chimney. I can see a little bit of smoke. Oh, it's still not bad. The Mini is working better than it uh, oftentimes does. It's not near as smoky. Maybe the flame is good and hot right now, but everything is working the way it should. I just wanted to give you another viewpoint from another angle. All right, I said I would be wrapping up in a moment, but uh, I thought this is something worth sharing. I don't think I had included this. I'm just sitting back with my coffee, relaxing, maybe not paying as close attention to my fire as I'd like. And I have some low flames down there, but not a lot <laughs> going on. Uh, if you get to that point and you really want to just get a quick boost going, let's just start dropping a few small sticks down the chimney. And almost immediately you can start to see the flames rising. And once you do that, maybe one or two more. And the reason I'm doing this right now is uh, I have a full kettle of lake water I'm heating up for uh, doing my dishes. Now, boosted. Now I can throw a few more sticks down in the feed ramp and get my water boiling with plenty of heat to spare. Just like that. So for these tests, the charcoal and the wood pellets, I'm going to be working in my backyard uh, just so I don't have to carry these two stoves together back into the woods for a second time. So I have preloaded the Vire Mini with 10 briquettes uh, and I'll be lighting that first because it takes a little while, of course, for the charcoal to catch on. The Vire stove, the original, I have it sitting sideways in the pit here because it won't quite fit into the pit in the other direction. So I'm going to load the pellets in that after I get this one lit. So let's get this guy lit. So you can see down the feed port where the charcoal stops. And what I'll do is I'll slide my lighter, my fire starter, down there. A little bit windy today here in Halifax. I'm hoping it's not going to cause us an issue. The only trick of course with this is not only getting it lit but getting it slid down without putting it out. So a stick would be helpful to do that. All right that seems to be working. Now let's get the pellets in the other one. So I should be able to demonstrate loading the pellets down the feed ramp for this. I could load them from the top, but uh, I'll just take those off because they're going to fall off anyway. So I have two cups of pellets that I'm loading, or not quite two cups here, and I'm just going to load them right down the feed ramp. They get down and even though the holes in the feed ramp are a little bigger than they should be for this, that it'll still work because uh, they jam themselves up once they start going down. Close the port. Now for this, I'm going to be using some just some plain alcohol, which I'll pour down on top of the pellets. Oops, hope I got enough here. I think I lost some. All right. 
And again, I have a little bit of fire starter just to light and drop down on the pellets. And I think that lit up. The fire starter will help uh, engage the pellets as well. So there's not going to be much to see for a few minutes. So what I'll do is I'll uh, cut away, because what I want to do here is I've got two kettles ready to go on. But I am going to start the timer on my watch, specifically for the wood pellets, just to get an idea. Now they're barely engaged. I'll show you a better picture once we get going here, but they're barely engaged yet. So I'll start my timer. And once the pellets are engaged, you'll, well, you'll be able to see the flames come over the top, but uh, for sure I'll show what's going on down inside the chimney as well, so I'll bring you back then. So this is definitely one of those lessons that fall into the class of, I should have known better. So in my testing, I had been using one cup of pellets in the uh, fire stove, and they worked just fine. They got lit just fine. Well, I put two cups of pellets in this time, and it didn't work out quite so well. I uh, had to encourage them by digging around with a stick so I got enough airflow through the bottom. So the lesson here is two things. Only use one cup at a time or increase them slowly to see what kind of uh, amount of pellets it'll take before it starts to bog down. And the second lesson, probably more important for me as a video maker, is don't do it for the first time on camera. So I finally got them going. As you can see, they're going well now, and I'll reposition the camera so I can put show you what the flames look from this like from the side. Uh, but before I do, I just want to move over to where the charcoal is. I went ahead and put the kettle on the charcoal because there's not a lot to see when you put a kettle on a charcoal. It wasn't about how long it would take, simply because, uh, oops, do a little better here. It's I knew it would take longer than normal, but. Hopefully you can see the coals. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's a lot of heat rising out of there too. It's pretty much, actually the water's already starting to heat up. I'm going to reposition the camera so I can show you what the flames look like from the side of the fire and then put the kettle on. So just another quick lesson learned is I'm discovering also that the fire stove can be a little subject to downdrafts. Uh, most pellet stoves are to a certain degree. Uh, what I've discovered is the feed port cover needs to be closed or it's even more subject to downdraft. So it's not doing bad now. It's working just the way it's supposed to. Get my watch out. So I've already had these running 25 minutes. And that's about what I got out of one cup of pellets. But like I said, I had struggled with this. So it'll last a while longer. And what I really want to see is just how quickly it'll bring a two cups of water to a boil here in zero degree Celsius temperature in Halifax. Bring it back. Okay, I think that says it all. Uh, obviously the charcoal on the right came, brought the water to a boil, you know, reasonably fast, faster than I expected, but maybe I, I should have expected it to be that quickly. Charcoal is an excellent fuel once it gets going. It takes a while to get going, but that's rolling hard. And the kettle I have on top of the regular virus stove is also boiling hard right now. Let me just lift it off so you can see the flames. It, it took a little over five minutes and 30 seconds to bring this to a boil. And you can, hopefully you can see there are flames coming up through. Oh, they backed up. Isn't that interesting? They, that's what I meant about downdrafts. Having the kettle on prevents downdrafts in the chimney like just occurred when the downdraft pushed it back up the feed ramp. Uh, I haven't seen that with wood but it, maybe it is something to keep an eye on. Okay, I think the successful conclusion, what I'll do now, I'm just gonna let the pellets run their course and I'll, in the closing, I'll give you an idea about how long it took for that to uh, run out. All right, a few closing thoughts on the Vire Stove and the Vire Mini. And as I mentioned before, the original Vire Stove I purchased myself, the Vire Mini, the, the people from Vire did send me for testing and review. So what are my thoughts? The, of the two, if you ask me which one I prefer, it would be the original Vire stove because it performed more like a rocket stove the way it was designed to. It does have a downside, which I'll mention in a second, but it drafts better and that of course is directly related to the height of the chimney in relation to the cross section of the chimney as well as the feed ramp. It just draws like a rocket stove should. 
The Vire Mini is a little bit hampered by its shorter chimney side, shorter feed ramp side, and right at the top where the crenellations are, it dampens down uh, some of the uh, exhaust air. Now, I, as I mentioned, Vire is looking at correcting that, so likely if you buy one now, it's already been corrected. The Vire Mini works better in the winter, and that's because there's not so much metal for it to lose heat out the sides. The Vire Original, not so much. It's hampered by cold weather, and that's because there's no insulation around the chimney like a true rocket stove would have, and you lose a lot of heat. Had that stove some type of insulation, well, then it wouldn't be a packable, foldable rocket stove, would it? But then it would work much better in the winter. But as a packable, foldable rocket stove for use during warmer weather, it's great. Three pounds, that's something you have to decide if you want to carry or not, but it performs really, really well. Okay, that's all the information I can give you on the two stoves. At this point, I'll leave it up to you whether you want to look at either of them. Um, what I would ask, though, is if you have experience with either of these stoves, put your comments in the comments section below. If you have any question about either of these stoves, put that in the comments section below. The information I have on the Vire and the Vire Mini in terms of their specifications and where you can purchase them, I'll put those in the video description or show notes below. Okay, that's all I have. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.